In the late 1950s, the Soviet Union and the United States began a race to reach the moon. American engineers needed to carefully answer a basic question. What is the best way to land a human on the moon? Early on, two options or modes were being considered. The first, direct descent, would use a single spacecraft and a single rocket. The second mode, Earth Orbit Rendezvous, would also use a single spacecraft, but called for two smaller rockets. One rocket would launch the spacecraft, while the second would send up fuel. The astronauts would meet up with the fuel tank, fill up their spacecraft, and head for the moon. If the United States was to reach the moon first, NASA had to make a careful choice. In 1959, an engineer named Dr. John Hubbolt was adamant that both options would fail. In both plans, the same spacecraft that was designed to launch successfully from Earth would also be required to land on and take off from the moon. Hubbolt was convinced that this spacecraft was much too large. It was a vehicle about the size of an atlas. Down at the Cape, it takes 3,000 men, a launch pad, and a launch facilities to get an atlas off the ground from the Earth. They were going to land something the size of an atlas on the moon backwards with no help whatsoever. I thought that was preposterous. Hubbolt suggested a third mode, lunar orbit rendezvous. The key to this approach was to capitalize on the weaker gravity and lack of atmosphere on the moon. The main spacecraft would not go down to the moon at all. Instead, the astronauts would taxi down to the moon on a separate lander vehicle that would be lightly built and specialized for takeoff and landing on the moon. Sometimes we call it the bug, sometimes we call it the lunar schooner. But the idea was that we'd go there, we would land with the small lander, but keep the command module in orbit after we explored, we'd take off again, make the rendezvous again with the uh, command module, dispense with the lander because it's done its job, and then we'd return to Earth in a very normal way. Hubbolt was convinced his plan could get America to the moon safely and more efficiently. But many at NASA opposed the idea. Uh, I remember expressions like, this is the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard of, the most unsafe thing. How could anybody go up there and land and, and rendezvous 250,000 miles away? After two years of frustration, John Hubbolt risked his career and wrote directly to NASA Associate Administrator Robert Siemens. And it was a blistering letter. And I first thought, well, I wish that guy would get off my back. I mean, uh, he... I, maybe I should call his boss, uh, the director of the laboratory, and tell him that, you know, you're not really supposed to cut across, I don't know, six or seven layers of management that way. And, uh, but I thought, but he's, I think he may be right. In July 1962, NASA announced America would use the plan championed by John Hubbolt to reach the moon. Right away, NASA began construction of a lunar lander. Overcoming gravity on Earth takes an enormous amount of fuel and an aerodynamic design. But the lander would never have to fly on Earth, so aerodynamics were not a problem. The main concern was weight. For every pound of weight that was brought down to the lunar surface and then back up, you had to add three pounds of rocket propellant. So it was a four to one growth factor on weight. We went back very painstakingly through everything. For example, the skin, the aluminum alloy skin of the crew compartment was about 12 thousandths of an inch thick. That's equivalent to about three layers of Reynolds wrap that you would use in, in the kitchen. The lander's exterior can be extremely lightweight because the moon has no atmosphere. And all of a sudden, the motions of everybody came through. They all got up and clapped. Von Brown was sitting right in front of me. He turned to me and he, with an OK sign, he said, thank you, John. 
That's the biggest compliment I've had in my life. This historic moment was achieved by using a landing vehicle designed for the unique conditions on the moon. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind.